I'm not the bad guy for returning a birthday gift I got for my boyfriend after he insulted me about my colorful past. I deep into my savings and got Mike, my boyfriend, a PS5 for his birthday yesterday. He knew he was getting the PS5 because he told me that the PS5 is the only thing he wants. We've been together for four years, so the calls didn't matter. This is until I found out what he thinks about me. Some background. When I was 18, I was involved with Jake, a guy who I met online. We ended things after three months, and I moved on shortly after with Adam, a guy from work. I found out a couple of months later that Jake and Adam were actually really close friends, but I didn't know Jake long enough to meet his friend group, so I had no idea. After finding out, I took some time of dating and two years later, I met my current boyfriend Mike. I was upfront and honest with Mike about my past and the fact that I was unintentionally involved with friends. He said he understood and my past didn't bother him. Last night at his party, I show up with a PS5 and him and his friends were screaming with joy. His best female friend Jessica laughed and said, I wish I was a thought so I could afford a PS5 too. I looked at her with an excuse me? Look at my face and she just said never mind and walked away. I confronted my boyfriend about it and he said and I quote, she's just messing with you. You can take a joke. So I pushed further as to why this girl is even calling me names to begin with. And he said, well, everyone knows you were a thought before you met me. I asked him to explain how I was a thought before him. And he said, you know, messing with best friends? Then he patted me on the shoulder and said, that's okay, because I'm not who I was back then. And if he could get over my colorful past and thought mentalities to give me a chance when I could get over Jessica's comments and give her another chance. I didn't say anything. I just got up, took the PS5 from the gift table and left. He was pissed. He literally called me like 20 times. But I don't care. I was so hurt that I took to bow off, took it straight back to the store I got it from. They happily refunded. it. I thought that it was done by Mike and all his friends including Jessica are berating me for being pity and they are all saying I thought this on myself by making poor choices. I responded to Mike and told him that he deserves better than me so find someone who wasn't a thought and get the PS5 from them because I return it. He started screaming how I'm the biggest bad guy for returning it and how I should be happy ignoring my colorful past. I'm thinking maybe taking it back went too far. So am I the bad guy here? Am I the bad guy for telling my parents I'm willing to sell them my forgiveness? My parents expected me to be independent the minute I turned 18. They gave me the money they had saved up for my education and they started charging me rent. I was lucky enough to have a partial scholarship and I found a job in the city my university was. So I moved there before the school year began. With my parents' money, my scholarship and my wages, I was able to scrape by. I rarely, if even spoke with my parents, I was kind of busy. I guess they decided that they didn't want the kind of relationship with my younger siblings because they were not presented with the same option. They both live at home all through university and even afterwards. I am 34 now with a decent job and a great girlfriend who I am being married this summer. I sent my parents and siblings an invitation. They called me to ask why they were not involved in the wedding. I responded that they hadn't really been part of my life in 16 years and that I was being nice by inviting them. They said that they acknowledged that they made a mistake when I was young, but that it was the past and that I should get over it. Against my fiancé's advice, I sent them an itemized bill for everything I paid for myself that they freely gave my brother and sister. 
I said if they wanted to be a part of my life, they had to end up. They said that they cannot afford that because they are in a debt still from helping my siblings out. I laughed at that and said I hope that I will see them at the wedding and hang up. My family are all getting a hold of me to let me know how much I'm hurting my parents. The things is that I don't want their money and I don't want anything from them at all other than their attendance at my wedding. If they can do that, then I'm fine with our early phone call. So, am I the bad guy here? Am I the bad guy for telling my sister she needs to pay for childcare or I'm not going to her wedding? My sister's wedding is in a couple months. She recently sent our invitations. I was invited as a regular guest, not a bridesmaid, since we live a state apart and obviously there is a certain level of involvement and time that goes into being part of bridal party, which I understand. I want to be there for my sister and obviously I would like to see her get married. But the problem is I'm a single mom. My son is six and when he's not at school I need to be home watching him. So being out for hours at that time isn't really in the cards for me right now. My sister's wedding is child free. Since it's taking place in her state, I'll need to come out and I'll probably have to be gone from my house for two full days. I can't have family watch my son since they're all be at the wedding and I don't really have friends who will babysit for two days. I contacted my sister and asked if she'll be willing to let my son come to the wedding with me and explain he couldn't be left alone so young and that I didn't have anyone to watch him. She responded by telling me her no children policy, but strict and she wouldn't make exceptions. I explained my situation again and said I'd need some form of childcare or to bring him with me. I then asked her if she will pay me to hire a nanny or babysit her to watch him. She got offended and said, children and weddings are both parts of life and I need to just figure it out. It's my kid, my problem. Which sure that's true, but also her wedding, her making it a problem, but no allowing me to bring my kid. I told her she could either pay for my childcare or I wouldn't be going to her wedding. Which all she did was call me ridiculous. She said she shouldn't have to pay for my child and that part of being an adult is knowing how to take care of that kind of thing. I think that's ridiculous. Money is tight, childcare is expensive. I can't magically afford for someone to watch my six-year-old and most people will just let me bring him to the wedding. My sister says she's definitely not paying for childcare. And I guess you're not going to the wedding then. My whole family is mad at me for not being there for my sister. I need to be clear, I'm not trying to force my sister to pay for anything. And it's totally fine if I can come. She's accept that. And I just don't go. It only become a problem when my entire family came after me for not going to the wedding. I'm not mad at my sister for not paying. I'm mad at her for turning the family against me and saying doesn't want to come to the wedding and complaining about me behind my back to my parents. She complained about me not going to the wedding as if I was purposely avoiding it. So, am I the bad guy here? Am I the bad guy for wanting my roommate to replace my special wine that her friend opened? I share an apartment with two roommates. My roommate Morgan sometimes has friends often and they all watch movies and drink something, usually wine. I don't really drink, just once or twice a year on special occasions. The most recent time was because my sis wanted to do a wine tasting while we were on a trip together. At the winery, I found the first wine that's actually enthusiastically light, a spicy wine infused with hot peppers. I bought a bottle, took it home and put it in my section of the shared pantry. A couple of months went by without accident. 
Then one Friday night, I came home to Morgan and two of her friends drinking it. I confronted her about it, and she said that her friend had opened it without knowing it was mine. Morgan apparently realized the mistake, but thought it would be okay because I've said that I don't like wine before. What makes you think that made it okay? I've said that before, yes, but this is literally the only wine I've ever enjoyed enough to buy a bottle of. I was saving it for a special occasion or maybe to share the next time my sister comes to visit, but they drank most of it and now there is barely a full glass left. I told her I wanted her to replace it and she agreed. Well, a couple weeks later she said that she's gotten me another bottle, but it was just regular wine from the liquor store. I told her that she must have misunderstood. I don't want just any old bottle of regular wine. I want her to get me another bottle of the actual wine that she and her friends drank. Her eyes got really wide and she started complaining about how the winery is a three-hour drive away and that wasn't fair because it was her friend who opened it and not her. Honestly, I'd tell her that I didn't really care. Morgan knew it was mine and let her friends drink it anyway. She could have told her friend that it was mine, put it away and told me about it. And I would have understood, but no, she let them go ahead and even pour herself a glass. She was still drinking it when I came home. So yeah, I've told her that her friend can replace it or she can, don't really care how. I just want another bottle before the lease is up next year and I'm about. Morgan is mad at me. She's been avoiding hanging out in our shared living room and won't speak to me at all now. Our third roommate thinks I'm being unreasonable and wants me to just drop it and accept the regular wine bottle as a replacement so Morgan will be get back to her old self. They're both making me feel really bad now and I'm wondering if I'm being too harsh now so I'm at the bad guy here. I'm at the bad guy for letting my son go to Disneyland. I have a six-year-old son, Jake, and we're currently staying with my brother, his wife and their daughter, Abby. Abby recently went through something really hard and traumatic. I feel for her with all my heart and I'm doing all I can to be there for her. During this time, Abby's become really close to Jake. It was sweet enough at first. And even though Jake isn't one to sit in one place for long, he didn't say anything and allows her cousin to cuddle and spend time with him. He does a lot for her and will wake up her when she takes naps for too long. We'll go out to the park with her to make sure she doesn't stay at home too long, etc. My sister-in-law was extremely appreciative of this and Abby seems to be happier when he's around. Of course, Abby is in therapy, so I didn't think she was dependent on my son to get her through the day. But a couple weeks ago, Jake's paternal grandparents wanted to take him to the Disneyland for a couple days and he was so excited. He kept telling everyone how much fun he was going to have and more. Abby didn't say much whenever he mentioned Disneyland. But my sister-in-law asked me if he was actually going multiply times. I said yes. Why would I stop my son from going to Disneyland? She asked if his grandparents could take him on this trip another time. But I told her that wouldn't be possible. She was upset but stopped. The other day, his grandparents came to pick him up and he was sitting with Abby getting ready to go when she suddenly broke down crying. Jake got scared and started crying as well, so I separated them. They calmed down and Jake left for Disneyland some time later. My sister-in-law was furious. She came up to me and was like, So, you really let him go? I said, yes. Okay, why wouldn't? She was all like, You saw how my daughter reacted to him leaving? And you're still confused? 
Apparently, Abby really didn't want him to go, and she cried because he was leaving. I told her that this was extremely unfair for her to say. My sister-in-law said that I was being unfair, and that Disneyland is not more important than her daughter's well-being. I never said this, but I told her that my son isn't her emotional support dog. And while I'm very sorry about Abby, it isn't fair to put my six-year-old son's life on pause. He's six. It's unfair for her to force my son to give up things for the comfort of his cousin. Sister-in-law called me heartless and says she wants me gone from the house before Jay gets back because she isn't putting Abby through this again. My brother intervened and told her that she's acting irrationally, that she told him to shut up. It's been really tense and while I did some to apologize, sister-in-law told me that the only apology she'll accept is one from Jake, but I'm not going to make him apologize. So, am I the bad guy? I really don't think so, but Abby is really upset about Jake's leaving.